too. Well, I so mean, Grant he, Hill. Go uh, there's this good book. Chris and I are gonna. Chris and Dan show what's up. First of all, like, subscribe, comment, share. Chris and I, we're gonna keep doing music. We understand you guys like that. We will do music. We will have guests. Chris will go solo. Sometimes getting political rants. Solo. I will go solo doing like entrepreneurship rants. But Chris, I just finished reading this book. One of my favorite basketball players. And quite honestly, man, this dude, Grant Hill. Have you ever heard of Grant Hill? Oh, yeah, yeah. This guy right there, game written by Grant Hill and narrated by Grant Hill. Amazing. So he would have been like, some people say, the next Michael Jordan. And he got hurt. And he he talks about the injury there. Like, the doctors kind of dropped the ball. He got to the point where they almost had to amputate his ankle over a toe, over a fractured toe. Hmm. Because it was, like, mismanaged, misdiagnosed and mismanaged. That's all another topic. But in his book, he talks about when he got – he had a sponsorship deal with McDonald's. And – so, yeah, he's happy with it. You know, they're paying him to do ads. And he went on an interview. You know how they do, like, these basketball players, they do, like, hundreds of interviews, right? So he goes on an interview. They talk to him about being staying in shape as an athlete. And he says, accidentally in the interview, he says, yeah, I've really had to stop eating McDonald's and, like, focus on hiring a private chef to keep my <laughs> body in shape. And then yeah, he oops. said, as soon as that published, McDonald's called him and said, hey, don't forget who's paying you, mm -hmm. basically. And he remembered that in future deals, he got smarter with, like, how he's going to work with sponsors. So, like, that's just that what you were about to say reminded me of that, like, for well, brand deals with pharma companies and all that kind of stuff. I think more ethical individuals oftentimes they they don't work with sponsors unless they actually use their product, right? Where yeah. Grant, I mean, I understand kind of Grant Hill's position where, yeah, I used to love McDonald's, I just can't eat it anymore. <laughs> yeah, he said something about it was in the context of he had to hire a private chef to like really get his body like on a professional level, mm -hmm. and how he had to stop eating fast food and stuff like McDonald's, and how he loves McDonald's, he had to stop eating it. And let's be honest. While he's being sponsored by McDonald's. <laughs> sure. But let's be honest. That would be a great uh, idea for everybody. Stop eating McDonald's and other fast food as well. Stuff's yep. horrible for you. But it's so good for you, though. It, it for your mouth. Good. Yeah. Yes, it tastes, tastes good. good for you. Yeah. The garbage always tastes better. Yeah. So I'm and, surprised you know who Grant Hill was, man. Oh, yeah. Wow. I he, okay. I think I still was interested in basketball when he first started playing i think he had so much potential he was like lebron james before lebron james and he would have been such a good like he would have carried the game forward and it's, yeah it's unfortunate he was, wasn't he popular about the time Sha Shaq was popular yeah he came like in the same like two classes after Shaq rookie yeah. class but yeah, yeah, he had a big deal with Fila. He's still making bank off of that. He had Fila's greatest shoe ever. Is still selling the Grant Hill. Uh, he talks about that in his book. So it's a great book, Grant Hill. Everybody go get it. Chris, you had a topic in mind, right? And I feel nah. like in this video, we're going to do mean, we like... Can, we can do it. I just don't know if you'll like it. I don't care. We'll do it. It's not about me. It's Chris and Dan's show. Sure. But it's helpful if we both kind of enjoy the topic. But let me break it down what we're going to do here. All right, Chris picks a down. topic because we don't have a guest today. So Chris picks a topic. Somehow it's going to inspire me at some point in the interview to pause for a music reaction. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we'll continue the dialogue at some point. Hopefully it inspires you to come up with a song and then we'll finish the interview and then we'll splice it up because it, it that's that's what works. And most reaction channels don't do that. So. I like to do what people don't do. Sure. Well, so what you got in uh, mind, Chris? What am I not going to like? What I was thinking is we could do something on the fact that, at least I think in my opinion, and probably others as well, that the United States is on course to duplicate <laughs> what happened to the Roman Empire. Okay. I think, I think a lot of... So 
there's eight eight generalized reasons, and there's a couple others that that I've read sure. elsewhere sure. on what and, caused uh, the Roman Empire to fall. I uh, we can definitely speak on this, and it's definitely not a new concept to me. However, let me just preface this whole interview by saying, why are we surprised? Why are we? Maybe surprised? we start with there. Why are we surprised? Why are we surprised that the empires fall, new empires come up? Why are we surprised? Sure. I know you're mad, and we're mad because sure. we don't want to be part of the empire that falls. But why are we surprised? Do we not study history? Well, the fact that history is studied, you would think people would learn to avoid <laughs> making these mistakes. But then, why does history keep repeating? It's just human nature, man. I don't know if it's human nature or if there's other nefarious reasons involved. That's my personal opinion. Look, people, there's always people variables. In, people in power get get greedy, get hungry, of course. get corrupted, and thus this occurs, right? Like one of right, the but it reasons, happens all the time. One of the main reasons the the well, there's two main reasons that most uh, historians believe why the Roman Empire fell. One was invasion slash immigration and two was the devaluing of their currency right okay i'm those glad you the, brought that one up yeah those are those are most historians feel those are the two primary reasons right sure so obviously we have what's going on now with the borders right and obviously we have what's going on with inflation and currency right mm -hmm. so are those two things would you say those could those two things could could have been avoided Yes, they could. Have. Well, the devaluing of the currency, I'm not so sure anymore. See, I because if we want to I... compete on a global Sorry. scale, we have to do that. If all the other countries are doing it, you have to do it too. I think really what started it all. Well, there's a couple of things that started the downfall, but the first one happened in like 1932, the creation of the Federal Reserve System, which is related to the devaluing of the currency. And I don't think they were put in place to devalue currency, but that is the easiest weapon to use, uh, which just kicks the can down the road for future generations to solve the problem, which politicians love. And I think that is definitely like the Roman empire didn't have a federal reserve, but they had something similar. And yeah, so that a hundred percent, I agree. And I think we can pinpoint when, when that started happening. So when do you think it started happening? I know when I think it started When happening. the Federal Reserve got created in 1932. I think that was the beginning of the end. Okay, I don't disagree with that. Absolutely don't disagree with that. But when it really started was under Reagan. Um, when he started spending well be above and beyond. Um, and you'd um, love Reagan. Yeah, I think he was a good president. But um, he actually started it to, to cause the downfall of the USSR. He overspent... Uh, Revenue, right? Yep. Taxes, um, so that he could put economic pressures on USSR. So yeah, uh, that's when it really started. We started deficits, deficit, deficit spending, and thus had to just print money, right? So devaluing our currency. But as you pointed out, uh, the Federal Reserve is also a definite problem, which they're there, and most people don't, or I think most people don't know that. The, this is not a government agency, right? This is a privately independently held um, yes. system in which the Control individuals... Started by globalists. Right, which people are there to make money, right? They're not there to yep. help you. They're there to uh, make money. Help you? Chris, the, and the rabbit hole goes so deep, all right? If you look at the Rockefellers, because really, like, the Federal Reserve was kind of a response to monopoly busting. So mm -hmm. if you got if you look at the tycoons from the 1800s, like a generation right before the Federal Reserve, you've got Rockefeller, you got Vanderbilt, you got Carnegie, all those guys. You know, they compare those guys comparatively speaking to Bezos and Musk are like 10x the wealth that uh, Bezos and Musk had on a scale. Like if you put it at scale, mm -hmm. that was an incredible wealth gap that they had. They called uh, that uh, that was the Gilded Age, and and they had like these these tycoons, uh, robber barons. They called they all they would do is make monopolies, 
right? And then they figured out how to control it. That got busted. So when Rockefeller's monopoly got busted, he in, there was loopholes. These guys always find loopholes. One of the loopholes was to spin off a bunch of nonprofits. So he did a bunch of core nonprofits focusing on core areas. One of them was healthcare. One of them was on banking. One of them was on educational system. Hmm. And they funded the educational school system, which stopped teaching kids how to be self-reliant and started teaching kids how to be yes men to work for corporations. And the pharma stuff, we can go down a huge rabbit hole there, but it basically funded the beginnings of the NIH and the beginnings of let's stop treating healthcare from a preventative perspective and let's start creating pills for sickness. It literally, you can pinpoint it to Rockefeller funding and then Gates and all them just followed. They just mm-hmm. extended that. So that's yeah. where we are here today. And those are the two that I know about. There's others too. And Gates is in love with all of this now. Yeah. So the monopoly busting created a need like they had to put this money somewhere so they had to put it into all these nonprofits and charitable things that actually just turned out to be other industries um, where they just found another way to make a monopoly but without saying it's a monopoly okay so um, tell me if you agree with the and to correct something you had said I think you said the Federal Reserve was born in in, uh, 32 Something I like thought that. It, I thought it was 18, and I Googled it. So tell me if you agree. In 1914, maybe. Yeah. 13. December 13. 23rd, 1913. There's a good tell, book on this, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Tell me if you agree with the uh, definition here of Google, right? So it says, the Federal Reserve System is born in 1913. When President Woodrow Wilson signed the Federal Reserve Act into law, it stood as a classic example of compromise, a decentralized central bank that balanced the components interests of excuse me a decentralized central bank that balanced the competing interests of private banks and populist sentiment so what do you think balance the competing interests i think that's the beginning of virtue signaling and figuring out ways to put to spin things to make them sound good and they certainly do. They're that not going to say what it really is. Like it's a creature from Jekyll Island. There's a good and, book on this. And yeah, absolutely. Uh, not to go off on this tangent too much, but they certainly do that now. For example, with that bill that just passed um, the Inflation Reduction Act or whatever the hell it's called. Yeah, it has it has nothing to do with inflation reduction, right? It's all about global warming. Right, but this stuff's been happening. Like, look, well, this happened this, from they, they, they just they just flat lie to you what's going on with the title of the bill. Yeah. Right. By the so way, here. there's another book, Grunch of Giants. Did we ever get that book for DSCS? One of us has so. it. I, I didn't get so. it. Grunch of Giants. The Grunch of Giants. Mm. He talks about. Um, it was Buckminster Fuller wrote it. It's kind of a rare book to have. I, I was hoping we bought we bought it back then. Oh, cause... I remember you talking about it. This was years ago. Yeah, didn't we buy it? I think you looked at it, but I don't think you bought it. Wow, I guarantee you that book like 5 x since then. In value and in demand. Um, so we should have bought it and just held it like a stock. No, you uh, can buy it on Amazon for 18 bucks. Really? That's what I'm looking at. Oh, so it went down. All right. Well, anyways, that book's really <laughs> good. It's a good summary of like specifically from the educational perspective of this. But yeah, Chris, back to like how you open the show. This is not surprising. Like none of it's surprising, nor should it be surprising to anybody. I know we have a lot of international viewers too, and it's definitely not surprising to them because they are not living in a superpower their whole lives. See, my point is. If not intentional, it's at very least semi-intentional. Bringing down... See, I don't know if the Roman Empire was intentional. I think it was probably more unintentional. Why do you say that? Because they had no frame of history. They had no, they had no benchmark on these occurrences, right? I, I don't think at that time. 2,000 years ago, did they have a history of, hey, what caused this empire to fall? True, I mean, a Mongolian Empire fell, uh, yeah, Babylonian. Is there historical records as there are with the Roman Empire and since? I don't think so. Well, theirs was the first democracy that fell. 
Right. Republic. They were a republic, I yeah. believe. Yeah. As we are. Um the Greek but, Empire too. The Greek Empire came right before them. Actually, they were the first democracy. Yeah. Okay. That there may be more documentation about. Of that. course, it's just because we're so far removed. Like two thousand years from now, you're gonna have aliens talking about the U.S. It's gonna be like maybe a paragraph in world history. Mm. Two thousand years from now, like oh yeah, don't forget there was the American Empire. It only lasted four hundred years, and as you can see, empires started lasting less and less because technology increased. This is what the aliens are going to talk about in 2,000 years. I already know. So here's just a couple of other reasons. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going to touch that. So here's a couple other reasons that, uh, that they mentioned that are the cause of the fall of the Roman Empire, right? Overexpansion and military overspending. Uh, that's probably true. Well, share it. Well. Share it. Can you share it? Oh, you don't know how to share, huh? No, not on this one. Yeah. Um, government corruption and political instability, for sure, that's going on here. Um, migration, already discussed that. Uh, loss of uh, traditional values, so cultural changes, and the weakening of the military, which is mm-hmm. also happening, mm-hmm. right? It's both, ha- both happening from the woke, as well as now they just can't recruit, right? Um they're, they're talking about this is the lowest recruitment rate ever for the military, that what's going on right now. Sure. So, And that's the same thing that happened to the Roman Empire. So all of these things are just repeating themselves. Now, are those things all intentional? Probably not entirely, but I would argue that the first two that most historians agree on are the primary causes are intentional. And then others mention that there's other things as well, um, overvaluing homosexuality. Right for a number of reasons that plays into the loss of a of an empire, you have def- declining birth rates, you have a change in culture, um, and I'm sure there's other reasons as well, and that's all going on here now. Yeah, but so what? How much of it is intentional versus just a vicious cycle that opportunists take advantage of? So this could be one of your favorite books, The Fourth Turning. Right? It could. Yeah, I like it. It could kind of parallel that, but the fourth turning is only an 80 year uh, rotation, right? It happens every 80 years. Yeah. So, so that wouldn't really define it um, in terms of, you know, what I mean by this is uh, culture, culture falls when things get going and they're really good for everybody, right? So, uh, uh, good times make weak, weak men. Right. Good time. Yeah. Say that. I always get confused with how to say that, but I know what you're about to say. There's like a cycle. Right. So uh, weak times make strong men. Strong men make hard good times, times make strong men. Right. Hard times make strong men. Strong men make good times. Good times make weak men. Something like that. Right. I think I'm missing one in there. But that's where we're at right now. We're good times making weak men, right? So again, it's an 80 year cycle, the, the fourth turning. So that wouldn't necessarily explain a fall of a empire. Um, but I definitely think that the fact that we're making weak men is not helping the situation. I think it's making it more capable of a fall, more likely Right. When, yeah, when people all they care about is their daily living, um, sure, staying fat and and happy. I want it now, I want it now, um, approach. And this actually inspires me for our first reaction of the day, but classic, classic, classic. So, anyways, back to our discussion the downfall of Rome. Well, um, I guess where I'm going is I think most mostly this is intentional. Yeah, but I know it's it's the sexy way to explain it, but how much of it is inevitable? Okay, so the only part of it that's inevitable, or at least to some extent inevitable, would be the devaluing of the dollar because of the current situation of the entire world. Because the entire world's in the same situation right every right all all cultures first 
first world, third world uh, societies are they're all overspending, all of them. They're all devaluing their currency. Matter of fact, the only one that is not is Russia, at least from what I last read. Right? They're the only one that is that is actually backing up the currency. And they're ta- they were talking at one point about having a fed- having a reserve like the United States used to, a gold reserve. I don't I don't know if they're well, still looking yeah. to do that. Well, we got to remember is Russia like in 1919, I think is when Lenin, and then they had Stalin after that. Trotsky. Like they're not, yeah, they're not, Trotsky, was they're it? not capitalist until like what the 60s. So, no, well beyond that, the 80s. Okay, the 80s. USSR fell and became capitalist. Okay, with perestroika and all that. So, of course, they don't have a Federal Reserve yet. It's or a new, brand new, yeah, it's a brand new economy. Like, you don't need that yet. No, but it took the U.S. like what two centuries to do it, from 1776 to like let's say, eight. Well, a century and a half. Right, but the fact that Russia is even considering doing it would certainly go a long ways to support their dollar, right? So if the United States was still on the gold standard, we would not be in this situation, right? The problem is, is being on the gold standard, you can't just discriminately spend, indiscriminately spend. Exactly, we wouldn't have the military we have now. We wouldn't That's- have. The that's tech not, industry we have now. See, that's not true necessarily, but you would have to make sacrifices elsewhere, right? You wouldn't have a lot of the... You either wouldn't have the military or you wouldn't have a lot of the societal spending. We wouldn't right? have the cheap goods at Walmart. Well, you could, because that doesn't have anything to do with the spending of the government. It does. Right? No, it has to do with exporting our labor off to other countries. Matter yeah. of fact, Matter of fact, I think it hurts the economics of the of the federal government because they it does. They don't tax them as much. It does, right? and that's why they have to pr- expand the money supply artificially. Oh, so that's your point. So you're so saying the fact, a tax base. It's all connected, Chris. Yeah, they don't since they're not. Okay, sure. Yeah, that makes sense. So let me. Yeah. you're right. You're right. So the fact that they're not taking the taxes from the companies that are exporting their goods from China. Mm-hmm. Um, they're only getting it's the, them. It's the good and bad of globalism, you know, expanding, and now we're dealing with the bad. We've lived off of the good. We get cheap stuff. We get so what? What does that boil down to? Right? That boils down to our politicians are just they're cowards. Right? It's not good for the country. They sure, know it's not good for the country, but they still do it because they want to get reelected. Because if they tell you as the citizen, we're well, going to pay more for your goods, which we certainly are now, right? Um, they probably don't get reelected, right? You right. can't buy you can't buy a new TV every year, right? And and I'm not yeah yeah, and you can't have a second refrigerator for like fifteen hundred bucks or less yep. when people in China are paying like three grand and they have a half of a size of one of ours. Yep. So yeah, and they want nice stuff too. So I'm not a historian of Roman Empire, but I'm sure if you look back, maybe we should have a an expert on. I'm sure their politicians were also corrupt towards the end of the demise. Do do you know any historians? You can find some. (laughs) It's not hard. You just find an author who wrote a book and bring them on. Sure. Yeah. It's not going to be hard to get. Actually, that would be be interesting. I'd actually enjoy doing that. Will you take that assignment on since you didn't do the My Money Don't Jiggle Jiggle uh, assignment? I'm I'm not on social media at all. Yeah, you just find their emails. I'll find somebody. Send me a book. I'll contact the author. How are you gonna call you find them on LinkedIn? Yeah, they're all over. Yeah, they're all over. All right. LinkedIn, Twitter. All right, maybe so I'll, have you been inspired? I'll, I'll try. I'll try. All right. So this the, does this inspire any music from you, like to want to react to? Not the, off the top of my head, no. Because my whole point of this thing is like it's inevitable. And yes, the sexy theory, it and mainly because it gets a lot of views, and it's probably Why? wait, wait, wait. Why is it inevitable? For reasons we just outlined, if See, you choose, I, if you choose an easier life for your citizens in order to get reelected, you have to pay the price for it later, and it usually means a weakening of your economy, which leads agreed. to other superpowers catching up to you. Agreed, but that that's not something that's inevitable, right? Human nature is not inevitable. 
no, politicians I'm, don't want to get reelected two thousand years ago versus course, today. Uh, of course they do. But what I'm saying that's still not an inevitability. You can it can still be avoided. You avoid these pitfalls, and you most do. likely, most you avoid likely it by fine. having a benevolent dictator. Who does what's right for the country? Yeah, but and no then way... you're choosing. We don't yeah. want capitalism. We want dictatorship. So you, there's no way you can guarantee a benevolent dictator. I mean, sure, occasionally and very well. <laughs> I, even occasionally is not the right word. Very rarely do those people come about. I agree. This is why, since the Greeks did it and then the Romans did it, democracies end up failing. It used to be thousands of years. Now it's becoming hundreds because technology is an accelerator. Well, it's going to be decades pretty soon. So, see, I don't think so. What we're describing, at least the fall of the Roman Empire, and I think it's occurring here as well, has nothing to do with technology. Technology is a huge part of this. Well, see, I don't think it is because devaluing of the dollar is not not entwined with technology. It is because technology is a deflationary tool. It has a deflationary effect, while at the same time, the government is putting out inflationary policies. That's a recipe for disaster. Okay, so let's and just Roman say... Empire, too. They had technology. Okay. I don't know what their technologies were, but they had technology. Sure, for their time, sure. At one point, reading Wait. reading, reading was sure. like considered, whoa. The church was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not sure about this technology. Sure. It takes away our power. Whoa. But let's step back. Let's say we're still on a gold standard. Do you think inflation would have any bearing on on what you're... Yes, because if we were still on a gold standard, our country would suffer short-term by not being able to innovate as rapidly as other countries that are able to inflate their monetary supply. Because the so government... So it's a short-term, can... long-term... So what game. you're saying... What, wait, wait. So what you're saying is by the government being able to pour liquidity into the system allows uh, spending beyond what yes. companies would be able to do on their own. Is that what, what you're saying? That is, yes, that is the perk of being a superpower. The perk of being a superpower is you can expand your mon- monetary supply and other countries can't do anything about it, and you can get ahead technologically in the short term because other countries keep accepting your currency until they don't. And then you gotta reap the be- you reap the benefits of that high tech, and you have to pay the price for that inflation. And it's happened over and over and over again. The Dutch did the same thing in the 1600s before the British took over, and then the same thing happened with the British with the U.S. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the British transition to the U.S. Empire was for a different reason, but uh, I'm World sure War- you could find the themes there. World War II had a lot to do with it. Well, sure, that, wars are part of it. Being that the United States was the only industrialized nation that still had capability, right? Every, everywhere else in the world was destroyed. But tech helps a country's military. Because the U.S. has not been the superpower for that long, right? Yeah, 300 years. Um, no, no, not 300 years. 200 like, years. Not even that long. I would say less than 100 years. No, what? So, nineteen twenty-two. Yeah, the around British... War, around World War One, the British were the superpower until that point. I would argue right before that, but okay, a hundred between a hundred to two hundred years. Mm, okay, but taxi inflate the the global currency gets to cheat, so they get to devalue their currency. They are incentivized to devalue their currency in order to because others are still accepting it. So they're like being treated on a curve. So their technology accelerates more rapidly until the dollar is devalued or whatever the currency is, is devalued so much to where they have to make cuts. Usually you have a social uprisings, civil unrest. Oh, I don't know. Like maybe in 2022, uh, you you have hyperpolarization. Go back to 2020. Okay. 2020 hyperpolarization. And then, but the good news for us, at least right now, is that the next superpower, China, is also having their own internal conflicts. So we might be able to buy like fifty more years of us being the. There could be global superpower. Yeah, China. China is set up to be worse off than we were in two thousand eight. All right, so maybe a hundred. I'm reading. Yeah. Unless, unless, and this is where your theory comes in, and 
you know, we only got 12 minutes left, but you want to talk a little bit about your Bible prophecy? Because I'm intrigued. I got like one toe in on that kind of stuff. <laughs> I tend not to believe it, but because I think you can make anything look like a prophecy, but it is intriguing if you want to open that Pandora's box. Sure. So Revelation, I can't remember it now. I think it's sixteen nine or it done. Chris, we're not in church. Yeah. Sure. Hmm. Well, it's just people can look it up. So there's 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 a prophecy in the Bible that at the end of the times, uh, in Revelation, it states that there will be a two hundred million man army, right? Mm -hmm. That will go to battle. So how do, how where does the two hundred million man army come from? Right. But well, does it say anything about like the dragon, the you know how like each country is like some scholars say, okay, India's this animal, China's like the dragon, Russia's the bear. Uh, do you have like this, um, or is it just two hundred million men? And now we have to like connect the dots ourselves with what's going on. So yeah, it's nine. It's Revelation nine sixteen, and it just says the army had two hundred million soldiers on horses. I heard them say how many there were. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean. To, well, you have to think about it in terms of when this was written, because it was well beyond 2,000 years ago. There weren't even 200 million people on the entire planet. Right. So to envision a 200 million man army is just ridiculous, at least for those times, right? When there right. was maybe 100 million people on Earth. Right. Um, so, But this is the Achilles heel, in my opinion, of Bible prophecy. Is what? You get like a little bit of info. Like 200 mil, all you have in that is 200 million man army. Okay, but when you're talking about a time when we we're nowhere near even a 200 sure. million people on the planet, that's a lot of people. Yes, right? but now put yourself back not that long ago to World War II when the Allies had 200 million people combined. You could have yeah. made the same argument. No, back then. no, no, you could not. There was not, Why? there was no way there was a 200 million man army. Right, there was maybe 200 million people total between the Western world in population, maybe what, a little in, more. In World War II, there was not 200 million soldiers on the battlefield, not even anywhere near that, nothing close to that. Huh. There may there may have been 50 million total soldiers at war. I mean, let's look it up. Right, World War II, Allies or Axis, whatever was bigger. Total soldiers who fought. There we go. Uh, oh, 70, yeah, million. So right, 70, 70 million. So 70 million. So right. that's still a long ways from 200 million. This is just one army, right? It's not I talking you, about the you. total population. So what you what you asked to discuss was that it looks like China and India are, are kind of in some capacity uh, becoming allied, right? And if they if they have an alliance, but they hate they, each other. They well, they're 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 working on military. Um, uh, I forget the word. Uh, they're working militarily together right now, right? So I don't know how much they hate themselves or hate each other. And I'm sure out of uh, what what would that be? Close to three billion people. I'm sure they can come up with a 200 million man army between the two of them. Sure. So, uh, kind of interesting. And Maybe it's a cliffhanger for the next video, for the next podcast. One other thing to consider is right now, the entire world is on the population decline, including China and India. And I think I read somewhere over the next yes. 80, 80 years, they expect China to fall in population by 50% over the next 80 years. Yeah. So, so including and that includes India, I don't think it's so dramatic in India, but they're going to decline in population as well as most of the Western world, if not all of it. Um, the only population that may increase would be the African population. And even there, they think they're going to decrease. So the entire world's decreasing in population. Okay. You got a song to like put us in a better mood um, before our next zoom. Do I have a, cause song? I got one from a commenter. All right. Play that one. It's somebody from um, BTS. Right. D'Agostino and um, uh, it, the rapper from uh, August D. August D from D'Agostino. Um, 
he's the one dude that I actually like. And this is his song. I can't remember. I don't have time to give the commenter credit, but he basically, this is August D's August D, the first mixtape album. It's his song. It's called MV. And we kept getting asked to do more of his songs and I kept putting them off. And I guess this will put us both in a good mood because we both kind of like him. So there we go. Before you start. Yes. Are you, are you envious of anybody or anything? Oh, it's MV. I heard NV. MV, yeah. No. But if I had okay. to answer that question, I'd have to think about it. All right. Go ahead. Since My initial reaction. Called no, MV. But yeah. All right. Ooh, Chris likes it. Ooh. This beat, though. Oh, dang. Wow, okay. Yeah, that's bars. Oh, that's Korean bars. He said K-pop. Oh, I got to see that again. Play it back. Even when I don't understand Korean, I respect bars. Let's go back. This K-pop category ain't enough size for me. It's a huge category. And he said he sell 500 million a year. This K-pop category ain't enough size for me. <laughs> my seat is business you economy always behind me and kissing my ass <laughs> oh man this guy's got bars okay august d i would love to have this guy on the podcast i know oh, we're yeah. not worthy we're not worthy <laughs> but yeah, jeez, just to, uh, like talk some shit, man. My seat is business. You economy. I'm gonna start saying this when I start flying again. Rappers so beat, I always get to fat dick them. No homo. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a lot homo to me, but <laughs> <laughs> I just do this guy's flow. He just switched it up on the second bar. And this is where most people see Google Trends shows you like this is where most people watch. This is like popular part right here. Let's go back. Y'all get turned on by my tongue technology. Yeah, he, he, he goes so fast, I can't even read it as fast as he's singing it. That's what she said to both. This is some Busta Rhymes Eminem type shit. I hunt down those who copy the copiers, get them down no matter who the fuck they are. I completely agree. A bum or a whack and I fack and I carve the history on this ground. No homo. A lot of homo. Miso fly bros are sick of me. Jealousy and whining, whining makes all that noise. Dude. I love this guy. I have no idea what that means. He's spelling his name. 
A to the G to the U to the S C D. Huh? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I did not catch that. Obviously, that's, you that's did. That's why I'm here. That's why. I'm uh, here. Obviously, you did. That's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah, this dude's legend. So my excuse for the STD is that's not something when I hear STD I think of somebody's name. Definitely not something you want to brag about, but but yeah, he's an STD. This dude's a legend. I know he got a zoom in a minute with Joey. We'll do some more reaction here and there in that one. But what do you think? I know yeah. we reacted. To we actually reacted to this one before, but it's been so long. And it's I think like I had new... uh, after I said that, and you said the response. This is name. I think I had that exact same question at that time too. Yeah, we I, did. I I kind of recalled. Hey, I remember having this conversation before. We did, but I think we only did the American part, the English part. Okay. Um, but anyways, we'll do more. But what a great way to end it because it started out like, okay, America, the decline of American Empire, <sighs> <laughs> fucking boring and depressing. And now we got at least we got some music in here, so I'm good. And now let's start our other Zoom. All right, thank you for watching, everybody. Like, subscribe, comment, share, guys. Catch y'all later and stay tuned. We got more content for that ass.